Hello, Foothill Church. This month, we will be focusing on the spiritual discipline of fasting. As Brian taught us back in March, fasting is intentionally denying ourselves of food for spiritual purposes. Each of the words in that sentence are important. First, fasting is intentional. That means it's a decision we make and we do it on purpose. Second, fasting is centered on food. You've probably heard of people fasting from all kinds of things, sugar, social media, their phones, alcohol, or people give up something specific for the season of Lent. All of those things are good and maybe the right choice for you. We'll get to that a little bit later. But when we talk about fasting, it's important that we, we understand the biblical expectation is to give up food for a certain amount of time. Why? Well, just think for a second about our relationship with food. Phrases like comfort food, binge eating, and all you can eat sushi something I love, all indicate that we have an unhealthy relationship with food. And I would argue that many of us turn to food in ways that we are supposed to turn to God. For comfort, for satisfaction, for dealing with pain and disappointment, there's a reason fasting is hard for so many people, and we don't do it. It's because we love food. But God is telling us in Scripture that when we deny ourselves of food and go through that process of hunger and weakness and distraction, something good can happen within us. When we work through it and focus on spiritual purposes, and that is the last part of the definition that Brian gave us. That fasting isn't just a diet fad or attempt to suffer for Christ. It's an intentional time of focusing on God and His purposes. That's what this week's guide wants to help you do. Intentionally set aside some time and focus our hearts and minds on four specific areas that the Bible connects with fasting. It's pretty straightforward, but the plan is to do a typical fast, which would mean you select a day to fast from morning until sundown, and then break the fast by eating a simple meal of gratitude. And then afterwards, journal around a few reflection questions. You'll also be given some prompts to consider during the times that you would normally be eating, preparing, or feeling hungry and weak. Each week, the topic will be different, but the format will stay the same, unless you want to extend your fast the final week of the month as suggested in the guide. You'll also find some other resources that will help you in your practice this month. You can get a refresher and listen to Brian's sermon on fasting. It was really helpful and good. There's also a great book by John Piper called A Hunger for God. In it, Piper will help you consider how fasting will grow your desire for the Lord and that in the practice of self-denial, we can learn that there is no greater satisfaction than from the one we find in the Christ. There's also a short but helpful article for those of you with families and how you can help your kids engage in the spiritual practice of fasting as well. Finally, I mentioned earlier that for some of you, a month of fasting from food is actually not possible. You might have a medical condition, a disordered relationship with food, you're a kid and missing a meal could be impactful, or some other factor that makes fasting from food unwise or unhealthy. If that's the case for you, you can still participate in this month's spiritual discipline. You will just have to get creative. Whatever you choose to give up this month for your time of fasting, remember that the whole point is to pursue spiritual things. So don't just turn off social media, stop eating sugar, or unplug your TV. You can still follow along with the guide and focus on the same things that the rest of the church will be considering. Our hope and prayer is that this month's practice of fasting will help you incorporate this essential spiritual discipline into your lifelong journey of growing in the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.